And I'm really excited about this morning. There is such a wonderful presence of the Lord here. Um, I'm telling you, just um, really, really is. So how many have heard about the San Diego outpouring? All right, that's most of you. Cool. Awesome. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching you know, on, uh, live streaming like some of you have, and uh, um, <clears throat> Jeremy, not Jeremy, but Joshua Mills was speaking about uh, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, Isaiah 60. And how the, that verse goes on to say that the Gentiles will come to your light and nations to the brightness of your rising. And then it talks about just the influx of, of souls and harvest, a powerful, powerful scripture promise of the glory of the Lord covering the earth. So I was watching him. He was getting pretty whacked as he was sharing that. And I just happened to say, I really like that guy. And boom, he came right off the screen. <laughs> I just, I wasn't expecting it. Actually, it's, I think it's like the second time in my life that <clears throat> God's come through media in a powerful way like that, where I just got really, really whacked in an incredible way and, and uh, touched by God. The other one was actually your father called me up on the phone, and he, as soon as he started speaking, oh, my goodness, just came all over me, and I was, that was the end. I was out of it. And so, um, and so anyway, uh, I, I, I watched it, and the next day I woke up and, I, and had this thought, um, I should go to San Diego. I should go to San Diego. And then, no kidding, like two hours later, I get a text from uh, Pastor uh, Matt, the youth pastor, and he says, hey, you want to go to San Diego? I said, okay, there's another word, and in the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. So then I, I did the most important thing, and that was I went to my wife. I said, hey, I said, I'd like to go to San Diego, you know, leave you and go. And she said, absolutely, you should go. And so I'm here, I went, and uh, thank you, Mary. And uh, uh, Mary's just been an am amazing support. Uh, she's an amazing lady, amen. And so... Uh, so I went, and uh, so why did you go? So, the, you know, I just want to sum it up <laughs> with this poetry of fire. I'll try to get through this. <laughs> you notice how I came down off the platform, that's right. So um, this is Psalm 63, and uh, um, oh God of my life, <laughs> I'm lovesick for you in this weary wilderness. I thirst with the deepest longings to love you more with cravings in my heart that cannot be described. Such yearnings grips my soul. For you, O oh God, I'm energized whenever I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and to drink in <laughs> more of your glory. Wow. For your great love and tenderness means more to me than life itself. How I love and praise you, O oh God. Daily I worship you passionately with all my heart. My arms will wave to you like banners of praise. I overflow with praise when I come before you. The anointing of your presence satisfies me like nothing else. Whoa, you are such a rich banquet, a pleasure to my soul. <laughs> I lie awake each night thinking of you and reflecting on how you help me like a father. Wow. Yeah. That's the, that was in me. That's the hunger that should be in us for God all the time. Huh? And so that was like, see, yeah, God, I'm hungry. I've had the privilege of being, you know, going to quite a few awakenings if you can, or outpourings. Toronto back in the early 90s. And then we know what happened here in 94. You know, just a continuation of that. I was dumped here. And then um, later I went to uh, Brownsville and, uh, and, and just got really touched by that outpouring. Same but different. You know, God says, behold, I do a new thing. And then later on I went to Lakeland, Florida. Same but different. Behold, I do a new thing. And then I got to go to San Diego. And you know, <clears throat> you can have as much of God as you want. <laughs> you can be satisfied with what you got, or you can just press in and go. And, and uh, I'm grateful to God that's always been in me. I just want, yeah, God, I want all that you got. I'm not satisfied. You know, I, I mean, 
How can, I mean, God is so big. There's so much of God. Throughout eternity, the angel cries, holy, holy, holy. With each holy is a revelation of who he is. There's, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, I went to San Diego, and uh, Matt and I, and uh, uh, we had so much fun there. Man, it, it was awesome. And I'm going to ask Matt to come up in a few moments. I'm not going to spend a lot of time preaching, because what I want to do is we want to just release something. We want to, and how, how many are hungry? Amen. So I went with that hunger. And, uh, you know, we, we got down there, and it's, it's in the Citadel, which is actually a sister church of Tracy Armstrong, who has a church in Federal Way. It had moved from the Heart of God Church because it had outgrown that and gone to the Citadel. So we went there and uh, got there on a Friday night, and um, Cheon was there ministering, which is really cool because he came here. I don't know if you remember that. And I remember when I was armor-bearing for Cheon and just standing behind him, walking with him through the, through the, through the sea of people, you know, because <laughs> we remove all the chairs here. Remember that? We'd have lines of people, and we'd just go through. And I was kind of armor-bearing, taking care of him, going through, well, taking care of him, just coming alongside, you know. And, and I'll never forget when he stopped, turned around, and says, God is sending you back into the marketplace. And kaboom, I hit the floor. And um, I, I, there was the end of my assignment with him. <laughs> and so, um, you know, long story short, God sent me eat cl- all the doors to preaching and traveling with sharing the, the renewal ended, and I ended up in a marketplace, and it was powerful, it was wonderful, and out of that place, actually, I wrote a book called Diary of a Witness, Taking Christ to the Marketplace, and saw awesome, awesome miracle signs and wonders, and so, so anyway, he was there speaking Friday night, and then we just, you know, when you, you, when you enter into that, that it, it doesn't always, you, you're entering, and you're kind of looking, and you're listening, and he goes, that's really good, and oh, I don't know, and just, you're checking it out, and you want to make sure you don't come with any kind of judgments or expect pre-judgments or but just open your heart and as we just began to open our heart you know we began to get touched and you began I began to see I ju- we began to see and hear the miracles you know it's just amazing miracles of people getting touched sovereignly by God you know they did laying on a hands impartation but I don't think and then they did a little bit of on maybe Sunday night of praying for people most of the time it was just God just touching people in a wonderful way but I do believe in the laying on of hands. I do believe in impartation, and that's part of, of what God wants to do. And we just began to s- just experience the glory of the Lord. And uh, one night after a service, I, I came back to the hotel, and oil appeared on my hand. My hand was covered with oil. I said, hey, Matt, look at this. <laughs> he said, you should periscope that. Anyway, so he grabbed it and put it on his elbow, which was all inflamed. And then he can tell you it started to feel a whole lot better. And, 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 but it's just a sign and a wonder, you know, and, and uh, God was doing something. And so um, we just began to uh, really uh, just enter in and go like sponges. Just go hungry and just go receiving, you know, with no other agenda, just to receive. And, and God began to really uh, honor that and, and to touch us in a powerful way. And I, I think it was, you know, <clears throat> Sunday night, um, yeah, Sunday night, I think it was, was it bit Sunday night, Bill, when Jeremy Nelson had us all stand up? Well, uh, apple wine. Saturday night. So we're back there in the back row. We like the back row because we could kind of get up and walk around a little bit, you know, and, and stretch. So we're, we're back there, and he's asking, hey, who's from here? Who's from there? And, and then, uh, you know, I think we yelled Washington. He said, Washington. He said, you folks from Washington, Stand. So we all stood, right? I didn't know what was going to happen next, but we all stood. And um, um, he said, <clears throat> I'm going to read it to you, and you can put it up there if you like. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. So... He began to make a, a declaration, and uh, he said, Washington, stand, right? And he said, in the worship, the Lord began to show me a massive apple in the spirit. So he sees this big apple in the spirit. <clears throat> and he said, God, what's that? And he said, I'm releasing, I'm releasing the apple wine in Washington. He said, in Seattle, Washington. In the northern part of the country, 
in the northern part of the west coast. The apple wine is going to flow from the mountain of God. I see the new wine of heaven coming, and I see God releasing a fresh marking, a fresh release of the peace of God, of the intimacy of God, the apple of your eye anointing that he's going to release over the state of Washington and over Seattle, Washington. I see also the firestorm moving in and moving out and moving in and moving out. <laughs> and the Lord is marking you today with the new wine in, in the glory. He is marking you today with the apple of his eye anointing of intimacy with God. And I see the peace of God being released right now, the peace that surpasses all understanding, being released in Jesus' name. Isn't that good? Apple wine of his anointing, the, the apple of his eye. Isn't it interesting that back there it says, you are loved? You know, that is really a part of this house, is intimacy with God and knowing that God loves us and knowing who we are. And when he said, when he released it, well, <laughs> we just all got wrecked. And, and, and I was grateful that somebody was standing behind me because I just hit the floor it happened to be my brother Don and Allison who came up from Arizona. And uh, he said to me, you know, you didn't just fall down, Greg. You were thrust down. And I had a hard time even controlling that fall. But I was grateful that I just went down. And he said, do you remember me talking to you? I don't remember a thing. I was out. And, and anyway, so we just began to drink this apple wine, which had a lot of joy. Had a lot of joy. You know, people ask, well, is this new thing that God's doing? Is it going to be similar to some of the things that happened in 94? The answer is absolutely. Yes. Yes. Why? What? You see, because a lot of folks got off the bus in 94. Some people never got on it. <laughs> and so God takes what he does and he moves forward with something new. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's not something else that's going to be your strength. God's joy is your strength, praise the Lord. But with it, <laughs> with it, we're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. We're going to see the prodigals come in. We're going to see an amazing harvest. We're going to have more joy than ever before because of the joy of harvest spoken of in Isaiah chapter 9. Yes. The joy of harvest, praise the Lord. And so we just began to rejoice drinking of this apple wine, of his presence, of his spirit, the new wine of his spirit. And we just got wrecked, you know, and um, uh, I've never seen Linda Boone so wrecked in all my life. <laughs> and, uh, and Matt, too. You guys, you like, uh, you guys are just fanatics. And, uh, and, and God just began to pour out. And, and we just began to experience that. His presence of intimacy and his joy and his peace in, in a, just a wonderful way, wonderful way. And, of course, Jeremy, he enjoyed it, and every once in a while he'd cry out, Apple wine for everybody! <laughs> and that would just send us off, you know, into ecstasy. <laughs> How that goes. Well, you know, I had an amazing experience with that the next day. I think you may have heard of it. I actually was, um, got up early and I went outside to the lobby to get some coffee, and when I walked out of the lobby into the parking lot with my cup of coffee, I had some yogurt. This guy walks up to me, and you know, he didn't say hi. He just walks up to me and says, hey. And he begins to tell me his whole life story, which was really R-rated, you know, and it was filled with all kinds of swear words and all kinds of stuff. And he just talked, and you know what? When people start coming in, they're not going to be all fixed up. And that's one thing about this outpouring. We're going to see a lot of people come in that, and, and some of the religious people aren't going to like it. You see, because the, the, the gospel is, is belong, believe, and then change. It's not you need to change before you come here. No, it's whosoever will, let him come. And so uh, this guy walks up. He's just telling me all this and all of his affairs and, and, and girlfriends and da-da-da-da-da. And then he, in passing, he says, oh, you know, I ruined my shoulder in the gym. It hurts really bad. Then he goes on. He says, wait a minute. Let's go back. <laughs> what is this about your shoulder? He says, yeah, I heard it. You know, I tore the rotor cuff. I said, you know what? How would you like to be healed? He said, yeah, that would be good sometime. And then he goes on. He said, no, 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 no. I said, right now. He said, right now? I said, yeah. I said, Jesus Christ wants to heal you right now. I really believe that. He says, really? I said, yeah. Can I pray for you? And he said, well, sure. Can I lay hands? You know, sometimes it's good to ask permission of a stranger. 
can I put my hand on your shoulder? He says, okay, so I did. And the power of God hits him, and God heals him. And then I, I knew he was healed when I said, okay, can he do something you couldn't do before? And he raises his arms up. Now, he could only go this far, but before he couldn't go that far. So I, then I said, you know, let's pray again, because Jesus prayed twice for a blind man. So the Son of God can do that. We can do that. And he said, yeah, let's do it. So we prayed, and his arms went all the way up, totally healed. Awesome. And then, and then, you know, I just began to share the love of God and the gospel with him. And he gets born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I watched, it was cool to watch his whole demeanor and his, his whole language shift and change. You know? <laughs> and, and so as God be, came in and, and the kingdom of God came in, displaced the old kingdom. And he began to really, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new was his testimony. Name's Doug. So, wow. So, uh, you know, that's, I thought this is good. You know, this is good fruit. <laughs> this is good apple wine fruit. <laughs> Come on. And so, uh, you know, look, whenever you got a counterfeit, you got the real. Right? I mean, I don't have you on me. But <laughs> if I pulled out some money made by the treasury department, you would see that that's real, right? But there's counterfeit money too, right? So just because there's counterfeit, you say, well, the real doesn't exist. You know? You know that there's real. So if there's a counterfeit, there's a real. And the, the question is, <laughs> what's the source? So you can make money in your basement. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> But when the government makes it, it's okay. Why? Because of the source. Because of the source. And, and God will do things. He'll send you into a culture where there's black magic and have you do some crazy stuff. Look at Exodus. Right? So God tells Moses to tell Aaron, take your staff, throw it down. So he throws it down, it turns into a snake. That's pretty amazing. What do you think would happen in most churches today if Pastor Darren threw down his iPad and it turned into a snake? And gobbled up all the androids that were there in the, in the church. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if that happened in today's church, people would say, you know, no, you can't turn that rod into a snake. That's working in black magic. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, that's evil supernatural power. No. God wasn't opposed to working something very similar to what the sorcerers and magicians were working as well. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And, and, but th and so they threw down their rods and they turned into snakes. But here's the, here's the clincher. The real or that which is authentic always wins. Yeah. Always wins. And ate up the other rods, see? So if somebody says to you, this looks like the Kondalini spirit, <laughs> and I've heard that, and if you're not aware of that, it's just a manifestation that takes place back in, in, in the East where there's a lot of occult, a lot of activity like that. And it's the spirit of a God that goes into a spine of an individual and causes him to shake and jerk and fall down and even laugh. So if you see that, you say, well, there's a counterfeit. Where's the real? Because if there's a counterfeit, there's a real. Absolutely. You know, and we shouldn't be on the defensive. You know, and we shouldn't get weirded out. We should understand some things as we move forward in this outpouring, in this... This, this thing called revival. And um, with that, I want to read something. Glory to God. I think I brought it up here. <clears throat> Maybe it's down here. Praise the Lord. Ah, here it is. So Patricia King gave a, a, a cool word. I want you to hear this. Prophetic word from Patricia King. The Lord says, I prepared a revival for you. For you. For me. Hmm. An outpouring of my spirit that will be filled with my glory, my fire, my love. Birth this outpouring with the key of faith-filled prayers. When you see the first signs, continue to pray and continue to birth. Do not simply remain in the corridor that has a measure of my glory, but press through with passionate, faith-filled prayer into the room called revival. I like it. I will show you things that you know not. I will reveal the kingdom mysteries to you in this season. I will demonstrate my power, and there will be a great harvest. Hallelujah. 
as a river of my revival goes to the nations. Partner with me, for I desire to pour out my spirit in a new wave upon the earth in this hour. The keys of hope, desperation, and expectation are important keys that will position you in the corridor. But it's the key of faith-filled prayers that will open the door to the fullness of what I have for you and for all. That's really good. She's going to be here next week. <clears throat> That's a good word, Patricia. There's a door called revival. Hey? We can hang out in the corridor you know, and just have a little bit of the overflow, overflow that comes under the door. <laughs> or we can step in, open the door with faith-filled prayers and experience all that God has for us. There's so many good things God has for us. I am so, so excited. <laughs> because I know what that word says about apple wine. There is going to be firestorms coming in and out of this house. That was the word for us. There's going to be teams coming in and out, going to the nations. Wow. Wow. I'm going to take some of you with me. Some of you will take others with you. On fire for God, sharing the good news. Where's Pastor Matt? I'm going to have him come up because... While we were there, I knew, this is Pastor Matt, I knew that he was going to winter camp, you have to turn that on, and I said to him in the hotel room, man, I'm so excited for you. You're going from here to there? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be so good. So I just asked him to share a couple things. Go ahead. All right. Well, as Pastor Greg always says, well, praise yeah. the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what happens when you spend you know, a few nights with Pastor Greg. So, um, so yeah. I landed Tuesday um, about 10 a.m., headed over here, um, got my wife and kids, and then uh, we headed to winter camp. And I'm just going to have some of the students come up and share uh, what happened. The theme was seeing in the spirit, and so we taught on that. And how many of you know when you teach on seeing the spirit, people see in the spirit? Um, most of the kids, well, I won't ruin it for you. So Jordan, why don't you come up first um, mm. and, and share? Um, so the first night that we got there, we were just doing worship, and before Matt was like, uh, there's, uh, there's a post paper in the back, just ask God what he's doing in the room and where he is and stuff, um, and just go write down whatever you hear or see. Um, and so Olivia, Jordan's daughter, um, she drew a picture of Jesus on a balcony in, like, in the room we were worshiping. There's a balcony up above. Um, and then I think it was the next day or that, that night, he, Matt, was, Matt asked everybody else, you know, where, where did you see Jesus, and they hadn't really, like, they didn't really remember that she drew that picture, but, um, like, at least five people were like, I saw him on the balcony, and so that was just really cool to see, you know, and then we were like, oh, yeah, I think Olivia, I think Olivia drew that, too, and it was just, it was really cool. A couple kids saw angels around the room and stuff, mm. so it was really awesome. Awesome. Amanda, come on up. This is Amanda. Okay, so um, the worship leader, Sarah, had a ruptured eardrum that she had, it happened a few days before she came, or a week before, um, and she had talked about how it was bleeding, and it was really mm. painful, and it kind of felt like when you get water in your ear, you couldn't really hear out of it, and it was kind of muffled, and she said it put her off balance a bit, and so um, one of the nights, we were soaking um, and just listening to God, and a couple of the kids felt like somebody in the room had ear pain because mm. um, they s just felt it for a little bit, um, and it was just an indicator that somebody was actually having pain in their ear. And so I think there were three kids. And so then the next day, um, Matt had those three kids pray for her, and then he had me and Jordan come up and pray for her also. Um, and she had totally, uh, her ear was totally he healed. Awesome. She could hear out of it normally. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And she was just, I just remember seeing the excitement in her eyes, and she was like, I can't wait to tell my mom. So it was really funny. <laughs> she tell you, Deanna? Yeah, come on. And worship was, as you can imagine, very, very powerful. So uh, I got to see someone get saved, and that was awesome. Awesome. Uh, so and I think it was Thursday night. Uh, we had a awesome, just Holy Spirit just worked in everybody and manifested in everybody, and it was a totally mm. awesome experience. Pretty sure someone else is talking about that, so I won't go into that. But um, Mo, uh, one of the guys that came with us, he's 19. Uh, he's Adam's little brother. Uh, he, I learned that he hadn't been saved uh, throughout the week. I heard about that. Uh, so I was just inspired. I was like, yeah, I, I want to see him get saved this week. So 
as we were seeing this awesome manifestation, I kind of kept asking him, like, so what are you thinking right now? What are you, what are you thinking? And even when we got back to the cabin afterwards, I was asking him kind of more privately uh, with a small group of guys, like, what are you thinking? And he, he said that he'd been, like, he said the prayer before, and he's been saved before, but he was just waiting to feel something. He just felt like he wanted to feel something when he got saved. And um, it was awesome because I got to witness to him to a point where I felt kind of the same way when I got saved. So when I was kind of saved when I was really young, but then through, like, 10 years after that, I was, like, always, like, well, I, I don't, f you know, feel anything. Is this true? I was really doubtful. I got to kind of got to explain my testimony to him, and I think we really got to relate really close with that. And then we got to explain to him, yeah, once you are saved, you're saved for good, and whether or not you feel anything, afterwards the Holy Spirit starts manifesting in you, and you start to feel stuff too. Um, so we got to see him uh, restart his relationship with God for real, and Amen. I'm really excited to see where that goes from now. That's awesome. And then, then the cherry on top of everything. So we did, you know, we did every night, we did worship, a message, and in the mornings as well. And then we did a soaking time from about 10 to 11. And during one of those soaking times, mm. um, we just joined hands after the soaking. And everyone was seeing angels and just having awesome encounters. And uh, during this, at the end of the soaking time, we're just like, all right, let's see what God wants to do. We held hands and uh, basically just, I just yelled fire. And mm. um, basically Adam who just like, whoa, he just gets wrecked. And uh, he gets completely drunk in the Holy Spirit. It's okay to stay mm. drunk in church, right? Drunk in the Holy Spirit. There you go. Um, there's no religious people here, right? Um, so, <laughs> so, then, <laughs> um, so then Janae, who doesn't even know what that is, gets completely hit. She was hit under the power of God for over two and a half hours. Oh, come on. And... This might get me fired, but it, it's good to confess in front of everybody. We would, Kendall, one of the youth, is sitting on her bunk going, pew, and they would just laugh, and they were just getting hit and wow. whacked. And uh, I went to sit on one of the girl that first got uh, completely hammered, and as I sat down, she, after I sat down, she turned and slapped me in the butt, and I was like, oh, I'm going to get fired. But what happened is her sister, who's older, got hit under the power of God, and then she was completely whacked for about two hours. And then other kids, um, same thing started happening. And I finally was like, okay, God, I'm ready to go to bed. It's like 1.30. Can I go to bed now? Um, and I heard nothing. And I was just like, oh, great. So let's just experiment. So I pulled one kid into the bathroom thinking, well, if you separate them, maybe it'll slow down. And I shut the door. It got worse. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm not in control. Praise Jesus. And yeah. so we just had fun the rest of the night yeah. and just got sloshed. So awesome. praise God. Amen. So That's awesome. Oh. Go. There's one other thing. One other thing. Um, so it was really fun because actually the three of us, we didn't start laughing or anything, but we were just there to um, witness it all. And it was mm. hilarious. The whole night it was so funny. Um, and he talked about Janae, um, she was funny because she could, she was talking to us, like, her older sister was just laughing, like, in her face in the ground, you couldn't talk to her at all, slobber everywhere, um, but Janae, you could talk to her, and her responses were literally as if, you know, God or the Holy Spirit, whoever, was talking straight to me, like, her re responses, like, almost made me cry every single time she responded with something, um, but, you know, I was frustrated for a little bit because, um, you know, I, I wasn't laughing and I wanted to have fun and laugh too because I absolutely love laughing. Um, but so I was just kind of sitting there. I was a little bit sad and Janae came up to me and she was like, why are you sad? And I was like, I want to laugh like you too. Um, and then she said something like, um, well, you heal people. You healed. We had healed her earlier of something that um, her stomach or something. And she was like, you healed me so I can laugh and have fun now. And I was just like oh, that's awesome, you know, um, and then later I was like, Janae, can you ask God why I'm not laughing too, and she responded with, shh, it's a secret, and so I just thought that was really funny, <laughs> um, and then uh. the other, like, the highlight of my night, you know, I was struggling for a while, because I wanted to laugh too, but um, her older sister, Emily, she slowly, like, she fell asleep for, like, five minutes, and then when she woke up, she was herself, and so we talked to her for like 30 seconds and then she started laughing again and she was gone. 
And so she fell asleep again, and this time it was just for, like, a couple seconds. And then when she woke back up, she was herself again. And so, you know, we were like, oh, Skinner, you've been um, slobbering everywhere. And we just told her what had happened, and she had absolutely no memory of what happened at all. Um, and then we were like, oh, you're drunk in the Holy Spirit. And she was like, no, I'm not. And then we just poked her stomach <laughs> once, and then she started dying all over again. <laughs> This happened 17 times. We told her the same story 17 times, and she had no memory of it. Th Come and it was on. always That's the same awesome. response yeah. every single time. It was so funny. That's awesome. Wow. And I'll, I'll tell one last story. Yeah, uh, Travis, who many of you know, he's like, Matt, there's a, there's a fiery angel in the room. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I know. And I was like, do you see where it's going? I was like, I can feel it. And he's like, is it following you? And we had the, the privilege of Korean or uh, Antioch Prez, which is down the road. Um, their, their pastor, Pastor James, brought six youth. One of those youth snuck back into the meeting and completely, he got hammered. Um, and Pastor James, we prayed and he felt fire and he's like, stop, I can't, I won't be able to function anymore. And there was literally fire, like you could feel like a tunnel of fire just going around the room and it was, absolutely awesome. amazing awesome so, we could awesome. keep telling stories but let's do some impartation yeah um, let's do it you ready for that yeah. me too why don't you all stand up if i could have the team that went to san diego come on up bill and linda boone and barb and john st john and and um i would encourage everyone to be uh, okay. yeah when they get up my <laughs> Oh, that's right. They encourage everyone to get All there. right. That's good. So remember earlier, Darren was talking about revival's work. All right. We, all this stuff around here. You see, there's the tables. The Bible says that my people will volunteer freely in the day of my power. They'll become a free will offering. There's a cost. There's a cost in an offering. There's something you give of your life, give of yourself. We want to encourage you after you get prayer to go around the tables. Just don't exit. Because we're going to need help, really. Right. And, you, and catchers, too. <laughs> so, also, go ahead. Hello. Hello. It would be really good if, if everyone was able to get prayer. So yeah. even if you, have to, if you have to get going, make, make sure that you cut in line. That's good. <laughs> Just say, look, I got to go. I, I need prayer. And also, um, parents, if you would go get your children now as well That's good. and bring them to get prayer because Jesus wants to touch families today. Yeah. He, wants to, he wants to touch your family today. I believe that. So Amen. go get your children, bring them in, and, and get prayer. Amen. And, and as was said earlier, you know, you may laugh, you may not. You may fall down, you may not. This is an outpouring of intimacy. God drawing you to him. You are the apple of his eye. John Arnott, who was a leader in the outpouring in 94, he never laughed and never fell down. And that guy is still being used of God today. So it's not about the manifestations, although all manifestations simply point to a greater reality as well. But it's about receiving. Open your heart to receive all that God has for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so... Um, Please come for prayer. We want to just impart. Father, we thank you for release today of the apple of your eye anointing, a release of the apple wine into Washington State. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right. Whoa. Thank you, Father. Just release fire and glory in Jesus' name. Yeah, and a fresh new sword yes. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Be filled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you too. Thanks for watching SRC Live with Pastor Darren Stock. Please join us every Sunday morning, Pacific Standard Time, 9 a.m. online, srclive.com. Have a blessed day.